So guys, we have a special, very special guest speaker. One of our own is going to be our guest speaker today, and uh, he just earned I Dare You. And before I, I pass the mic over to, over to him, I'm going to share with you guys his canvassing chart, just so you guys can look at his exact data. So if you're new, this is a copy and paste business. All you have to do is just do the same activities that other top producers are doing. Okay, so I'm going to show you the exact activities that Mr. Ed Hurley um has been doing since he first started here. His first week was on January 2nd. So he started 2023, um, literally uh, the fiscal year, perfect timing. So this is Ed Hurley's canvassing chart, guys. So I'm just going to show you guys his numbers since he's been here. And we're going to really kind of just focus on the hours and the demos because this is the secret sauce, what he's going to be talking about today. So Ed Hurley's very first week, he worked 51 hours in the field. Um, he actually didn't have as many demos as he hoped. He only had 24. Okay, so we got to talk about that. Um, however, his second week, he, get, he worked 48 hours. He had 39 demos his second week with five families protected. Guys, that's only protecting like one out of eight people. Okay, for 4,400, he worked 4,400 his first week. He protected five out of 24 demos. His third week, things started to click a little bit more. Takes three weeks to form a habit, right? 46 and a half hours in the field in front of Mr. and Mrs. Jones prospects going B2B to B2B. To B to B. Look how many contacts, 106 contacts, 113 contacts. He had over 100 contacts every single week his first three weeks. And then he got 27 demos, six families. Fourth week, 47 hours, 130 contacts, 35 demos, seven families. He's not protecting every single person. He's protecting one out of five. You know, that's about what the average rookie does. One out of six, one out of five. Fourth week, 50, 47 hours, 56 hours. And then this last month, he did have a family emergency the week of February 13th. However, he did not let that derail him from earning his golden prize of earning, I dare you. The week after that family emergency, he hit it super hard. 58 hours, 32 demos, 12 families protected for 14,000. Week after that, 47 hours, 53 hours, 58 hours. He's not working 80 hours a week, guys. He's literally working about you know 45 to 55 on average. But getting those demos at 32 demos, 27, 31, 35, protecting 12 families a week, five, seven, 11 families the last four weeks uh, to write a lot of premium in the last month. So we earned, I dare you. So, guys, that's copy and paste exact activities that Ed's doing. You're going to get very similar results. So Ed was able to earn, I dare you. Uh, this past quarter, Ed has got three kids, young kids. They're boys and they're very active. And uh, yeah, so he's got busy things at his house. Three young boys, he's married. He lives in right in Lexington, North Carolina. He actually lives on uh, one of the lakes up there. I think it's High Rock Lake, if I'm not mistaken. So um, we're gonna have a big lake house party on his uh, property here at some point. Um, <clears throat> just can't wait for that invitation. But guys, we're gonna have Ed talk to us today. I'm actually gonna do this interview style. So make sure you're taking notes. And we're first gonna hear from Ed on his background. So Ed, if you could just, Tell us a little bit about your background. Like, tell us a little bit about what you're doing before you came here to Family Heritage, you know, and just a little bit about your family and just what you're doing before you came here. Sure, yeah, good morning. And, and I appreciate this opportunity, Kyle. Um, so fresh out of high school, I uh, went into the Navy. I did intelligence work in the Navy for four years. I thought I was gonna be a lifer, uh, but two back-to-back -back deployments uh, in theater, it just, uh, it was too stressful to try and raise a family. Um, I've been in love with the same woman since I was probably 10 years old. So I knew what I wanted. I knew I wanted, you know, a big family. I knew I wanted to settle down with her. That was much more important than, than military goals. Decided to come back home, join the family business of law enforcement. Uh, there's the, every man in my family on my dad's side has been in law enforcement in some way. Um, so I thought that was a natural fit. Uh, worked for High Point PD for a, a decade. Uh, I was a, a homicide detective there when I left, you know, and um, stuff started happening politically and socially, and it kind of kind of started seeing the light on that. So, okay, that's really cool. That's a really cool background. Navy, being a police officer for a decade. Um, that's awesome, man. So what? <clears throat> led you to family heritage like what is i guess one or two things that wanted you to be a part of our family over here sure so you know the easiest way to explain that is is watching so many of my colleagues and my comrades who i've been with some of them since the academy um leaving for private sector jobs 
uh, doing much better financially, doing much better stress wise, but more so they seem happier. These guys all seem and gals all seem like they were really enjoying that lifestyle, not being, you know, uh, working law enforcement, long hours, 80 hour weeks, hundred hour weeks, you know, and, uh, it was more so that I needed a change. You know, I, I knew that I, I wanted to be more present with my kids. I wanted to be more present with my wife and my family. And I wanted to have more time to do the things that we enjoyed doing instead of just, you know, dad's at work, you know, where's dad, dad's at work all the time. So that was, that was a big catalyst for that. That's awesome. And yeah, you've got three young kids. How, how old are your, your, your boys again? So there is one, there is one correction. My daughter's the oldest. She's uh she's almost nine, but She's a, she's as much as a tomboy as she is a princess. So it's okay. Um, my boys are Irish twins. So they're four and five. They're, they're right next to each other there. And, you, and you're right. I tell folks that I run a circus part-time and that's the truth. That's awesome, man. That's so cool. So just, you've only been here for three months, actually technically not even three months. Um, and he's already gotten, just so you guys know, he's already earned his way up to a 40% contract because when you get $50,000 worth of premium, you get up to that 40%. But just so far, what in, in the short amount of time you've been, you've been here, what has this allowed for your family, like lifestyle? Like what has this career kind of allowed you to do that you didn't have prior? Oh man, <laughs> that's a long list. Um, some of y'all might remember that, you know, I, I talked about in February going on a vacation with my family. And honestly, that was the first vacation I've been able to take with my family since the beginning of the pandemic. And it was the first vacation that I've never had to put on a credit card. Okay. This career has really offered me the opportunity in this short time that I've been here with such a financial freedom that I couldn't begin to explain that. Um, before, you know, I was worried about which bills I was going to be able to get paid each month. And I was having to put some on the back burner, you know, and I, I hated that because as a father and as a husband, a provider, that didn't feel right. Didn't sit right with me that we were just getting by. I didn't like that. Um, you know, I was slaving away, working at a career and I excelled at it. I, I was very successful in law enforcement. I got medals and accolades and awards and it, it wasn't anything about that, but you know, now, and, and this isn't all materialistic, but you know, I've been able to afford a brand new truck for me, been able to afford a brand new SUV for my wife. I pay all my bills. I'm putting money in, in savings, putting stuff away for the future. Uh, and, you know, less importantly, but more maybe creature comfort stuff. You know, I, I used to have to save up money for months to be able to afford a new gun or a new tattoo or something. And now it's, uh, you know, I, we're, we're a lot more free than we ever have been. So yeah, that's like an overnight success story, less than 90 days. And you, you already can afford a new truck, a new car for your wife. You, you have the first vacation that you've, you've had since pre COVID. Um, that is awesome, man. In less than 90 days, that's what this career can do just like that. When you take action and make things happen. So let's get down to the nitty gritty. Why have, what are some reasons why you've been successful so far in your opinion? Like, what do you think that you're doing? That's hoping you be successful. Um, I mean, to give the most honest answer, um, I've had fantastic leadership and that's not, I'm not saying that just because we're on a Zoom call. You know, um, you and, and John Helton and other folks have been leading from the front since day one. It's been consistent. It's been intent with a purpose. Um, and, and looking at all of those things, those contributions that you guys and those opportunities that you've allowed me to succeed, um, it's no surprise that I've been successful with that kind of support system. Um, I could say something egotistical like it's my drive or my competitive nature or my ability to talk with folks from any background you know but the truth is if I, I when it boils down to it it's the support structure whether that's you guys or my family or the colleagues you know it's it's the support system man you are a humble man my friend Very <laughs> humble me. Um, I appreciate you saying that now let, let's also just talk about like what are some other things like you know, and it's okay to brag by yourself, but like, what, what are some like daily activities that you're doing? Like, what do you, like, what is your routine, you know, at say at night or in the morning to help you get prepped for the day? Like, cause you have an action plan 
on a daily basis? What are maybe some things that you're doing to make sure that you guarantee your, yourself success uh, during the day? Sure. So it's, it's become, now it's become more habitual. You know, I, I'm able to take my daughter to school every morning. I use that time in the morning while she, you know, we're all getting ready to, to kind of get myself prepared uh, mentally for the day. I do a lot of meditating. I do a lot of, a lot of work. I do a lot of reading. Um, a lot of the stuff you guys have suggested, you know, whether it's, you know, different authors or different books and stuff that's helped a, in a big way. Um, I'm not like, uh, I'm not like our folks out West. I don't, I don't take ice baths or anything. I'm not there yet. Um, but you know, my wife has been a huge contributor to allowing me to have this rhythm. Um, she knows that, you know, my day from the time I dropped my daughter off at school, it's game time. You know, I talk to you guys in the morning, but I've already got, you know, my set areas of, of town that I'm going to go talk to. I've already got referrals that I know I need to catch up with follow-ups I need to do. I know that, um, there's folks that I need to catch up with. Uh, I, I don't try to spend any time during the day idling, you know, and, and I can thank John for this, I guess, but I, I've always been this way. I, I don't, I try not to eat, you know, during the day, or if I do, I'll pack food. Um, I just try to keep moving. I try to, I try to stick to that five minute rule as best as I can and not let, you know, five minutes go by when I'm not talking to somebody or driving that I'm not out talking to somebody. Um, but it's, it's been very, I've been trying to be very consistent with everything and, and trying to nail down stuff at night, get the business plans done on Sunday, try to get my game plan mapped out. And uh, so far it's, it's been all right. Keep doing those things, Ed, because uh, yeah, hundred percent, like 100 percent keep doing those things and you're going to see even more success. Um, that is unbelievable. You pack your lunch, you have an action plan for the day, five minute rule, and you hit the ground running aggressively each day because you have a plan going into the day. Thank you for sharing that, man. Um, yes, sir. What are you, what are some of your goals here? Like what are maybe some of your goals that you have for this year? Like, where do you want to go up the career track here? Like, where do you kind of see yourself in this career over the next, you know, one or two years? Sure. So, I mean, I, I look at, I look at John Helton and I hate to keep just name dropping John, but I, I see what he's been able to accomplish and build in such a short, you know, respectively short amount of time. And um, it's really inspiring. And, and just like, you know, you in, in, in less than a decade, you know, you've, you've built this, this structure here. And I, I really would, I really can see myself moving towards those kinds of goals. I want to build um, something here that's going to last for a long time. You know, my, you, uh, you guys saw fit to hire my little brother and uh, he's, he's working hard every day and I'm helping him study and helping him do practice tests and stuff. And, uh, you know, I'm so excited about that because I really do want a lasting family legacy here in uh, in the the Lexington region, Davidson County. You know, um, honestly, I'm I'm excited future wise. I mean, the next year, this next year, I think is going to be the first year on record where I haven't been worried about money. That was probably either number one or number two of my biggest stresses that I carried around. I got I got a bunch of gray hair to show for it. Um, but right now, you know, I'm not worried about whether or not I'm going to be able to afford a summer vacation or a fantastic series of birthdays or Christmas for my kids. You know, it's it's already a guaranteed thing. Like you said, if I keep doing what I'm doing, make the numbers work for you. Um, and, you know, talking about my brother, you know, once he starts, I'm I'm super excited to start building a team around he and I. You know, we've been in talks recently about setting up an actual, you know, brick and mortar you know, family heritage office, you know, I talked to you about that earlier and I, and I just, uh, I could not be more hopeful for the future because I see huge things happening. Oh my gosh, dude, that is awesome. Guys, he's been here less than 90 days. He's already talking about getting a brick and mortar office like that. He actually called me yesterday with the real estate opportunity that he's interested in possibly getting his own office in downtown Lexington. Like that's, that's awesome. Talk about the vision I know we had Peter Frey talk about vision on the on the uh, conference call last week. Guys, that is huge. He's got a vision, and he is going for it. He's already got his brother uh, signed up. Um, he's going to be starting. He's going to have other team members here soon as well. Um, hey, let's get a little bit technical, um, Ed. So what are, what is a part of the cycle of the sale that you feel like you're dominating right now? Okay. Um, I mean, if I had to lend credence to any part of the sales, you know, cycle – which I think I'm most confident in my abilities in, I think that would be the the rapport building component. I mean, that, 
I could talk about other things, but you know, as a police officer, my job was to know folks, whether it was at their homes and their businesses or out and about, you know, it was my, it was my job. If I did it, if you do it well, you know, it's your job to know patterns and irregularities and to be able to discern between the two of them. But, you know, more importantly, as a detective, my most important job was getting to know people inside and out before I ever meet them. You know, being able to predict what they're going to say and be able to roll with the punches with that. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's kind of the people centric skills, I guess. And that's, that's always been my strongest suit. Um, I, I've told a lot of you guys that uh, back when I was a cop, you know, my guys on the street used to call me Dr. Phil, you know, because I used to sit down and actually get to the heart of problems and things that were bothering people and try to find appropriate solutions for that and, and try to counteract that the best way that I can. And that that has translated directly into my ability to talk to folks from every walk of life out here. You know, like you said, B to B to B to B. Uh, it doesn't matter what kind of business you're at. You know, I. I'm pretty good at picking up on things that are going going on with folks' lives. Um, on top of that, you know, I think, and I know there's not supposed to be too much tailoring in the sales talk. I don't, I don't go off script very often, but I think um, my parents instilled a strong set of manners in me very young. That's carried me a long way growing up. Every job I've ever had, every situation I've ever been in, it's been about manners and decorum and being polite and just being being a decent person. Um, so that's not something you can really teach somebody. Um, but I think that's, that's gotten me very far in this, you know, being able to read people, being able to, to find their need to, to dedicate time to the need. That's all it is. That's awesome, man. Guys, I had the pleasure of working with that last week. He was really good. Everything he said was 100% accurate for one. He was raised very well. Like he, he's very polite, very humble, but he dresses very sharp. He's very professional. It looks like you're wearing a tie today. Uh, that's going next <laughs> level. You don't, you, don't, you don't have to wear a tie to be successful here. Um, but guys, he dresses sharp. Um, he looks professional. And uh, sometimes little things like that can be the difference of getting somebody's account number, you know, making sure that they're not skeptical, too good to be true. If you're dressed, you know, like you just came out of working, you know, construction all day in the field, you know, you may not get that person's account number for 180 a month. It looks super sharp. Um, this is one reason why his closing percentage uh, is a little bit higher. So thanks for sharing that, Ed. Um, do you want to roll? So Ed is really good at building rapport with people, um, especially whenever he first comes in. Like, there's nobody that's a stranger to Ed. So, Ed, can we role play just, like, breaking the ice and building building some rapport real quick, like whenever you first walk into the business for a quick minute? Sure, absolutely. Let's say that you're cold calling a business. You don't know my name. The very, let's just do, like, the first 30 seconds to a minute. What does that kind of sound like? whenever you first walk into a business. Sure. So, uh, hey, good morning. How are you guys doing? Doing pretty good. How about you? Good. I'm uh, Ed Hurley. I'm with Family Heritage here locally. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm in charge of talking to folks here about, you know, heart attacks and cancer, accidents, bad stuff. Um, you know, I, I hadn't got a chance to come by here and introduce myself to y'all yet, but I, I wanted to do that because that's important to me. What's your name? Uh, Kyle. Nice to meet you, Kyle. Where are you from, buddy? Um, I'm, I'm from Asheville, North Carolina, but I've, I've been here for about five years now. That is fantastic. I have so much family up in Asheville and Ash County and Watauga County. That's where all my daddy's folks are from. Uh, what, what part of Asheville? Uh, on the Northern part is called Madison County. I went to Madison. High oh, School. Yeah. Fantastic. What year did you graduate? Uh, 2008. Okay. So did you end up going to college up there? Yeah, well, went to went to App State, uh, the Harvard of the South. Fantastic! That's that's the alma mater for my family. Okay, every every, I guess I broke the mold. I wasn't one of the guys that got to go to App State. I I, I wanted to go the military route, but everybody else in my family's been to Appalachian. That's fantastic, man. Yes, sir. So Boom. I mean, Kyle. Oh, it's okay. No, guys, that that that's good. That's good. You're, you're making it very personal. And guys, I I threw a curveball. I'm not from the area, but just breaking the ice a little bit and then he dives into what we do so we talk about cancer heart disease accidents he was really good at doing that last week and he makes a friend first before he talks about insurance you know so not for 15 minutes but he does it really quickly for about 30 seconds to a minute breaking the ice now some people guys you get in the field they want to get to the meat potatoes really quick 
you know, and then he gets to the meat and potatoes really quick. But some people that are kind of talkers, you know, we're down here in the South. Some people love to chat. Go break the ice for a quick minute and then dive into what we do, right? Kind of depending on the person. I know I saw him last week. There was this one lady at the store shop. She was straight to the, what are you doing? What are you doing? You, you, you couldn't break the ice with her, but he still got the, you know, still, still want to get to sit down uh, with that lady. And there's other people that love to chat and you can break the ice a little bit more. So, you know, just being able to be comfortable with the uncomfortable at first and just having those conversations and your closing percentage of getting to sit down gets really high. And after you get to sit down, like, so once you're sitting down with people, what is the very beginning of your introduction look like? Like when you first get to sit down? <clears throat> Right. So like I said, I, I try not to deviate too much, but I, I also, well, I'm just, I'll start with it. So, you know, Kyle, listen, buddy, I, I got to be respectful to everybody because I, I don't know everyone's situation going on. Um, do you have anybody close to you, whether it's friends or family or coworkers who have been through anything nasty like cancer or heart disease or, or been in a bad accident? Yes, sir. For sure. What I happened? Have... Who was? Yeah. My sister, unfortunately had cancer. She was pretty young. That's, that's terrible. What what kind of cancer she had, buddy? She had a soft tissue sarcoma. Mm. It's, it was like okay. a tumor from her hip, and then went up to her went up to her lungs. What what's she doing like now? What's what's going on with her? Uh, she unfortunately passed away. I, I could not imagine that, Kyle. How um how old was she? Uh, Twenty six. Hmm. You know. Uh, we talked to a lot of folks like that. I talked to a bunch of folks like that who, who've gone through very similar things that you've gone through. Um, and I can't imagine, you know, uh, dealing with some kind of grief like that, you know, but <clears throat> could you tell me a little bit about her fight with cancer? I mean, what, what, how long did that last for? Yeah. So, uh, she got diagnosed when she was 24. I remember cause she had just gotten married and then mm. she had for about, close to two years. Cause I remember she, she actually had it. She survived it. She did a chemo radiation, all that. And then she was cancer free for like six months and then it came back. And then when it came back is whenever she passed away. It was probably about two years. You know, I, I couldn't imagine, and I'm, I'm not trying to, to compare here. I, I promise I am. Um, cancer has eaten up my family. Um, I'm going through a really hard struggle with my dad right now with leukemia and, um, so talking to folks like you gives me a lot of a lot of strength moving forward because I I, I don't know how I'm going to deal with this moving forward. But you know, talking about what I do, Kyle, that, that's exactly what I'm here to take care of. You know, and I care very deeply about it. Um, did did this battle with your sister did it financially impact the family strongly? Yeah, yeah, I did. Because we're going to pause there. We're not going to do an entire demo. But thank said for sharing that because you just ask a lot of second level questions you know what kind of cancer how old was she you know radiation chemo what was the outcome and uh yeah he didn't just ask who's the closest person who's had cancer my sister okay well out of these three which one of these three would concern me the most he actually got those next level questions down and he was really good at getting story so uh facts tell story sell and if you really want to sell a lot of cancer insurance in this business You've got to get an emotional story out of them. Same thing with accident policies, heart, the whole nine yards. So uh, thanks Ed, for sharing that, man. Just asking those next level questions. Uh, I'm actually done asking Ed questions. I'm going to pass, open up to the uh, audience. Any questions for Ed before we- before Ed, what's up, man? Brad Phillips here. Uh, just want to say, um, you know, I mean, y'all understand what Ed just did right there. Textbook, textbook, you know, um, asking some, hey, if you don't mind me asking, you know, who's the closest person you who's ever had to deal with something like cancer or heart attack or stroke or a bad accident y'all like and then asking those follow-up questions y'all you you gotta understand something obviously we all know when we sit down with people there's kind of like this um this invisible barrier that's up you know a really easy way to break that invisible barrier down you get personal with them you ask them those personal questions y'all like that's ed immediately started building the need for what we do right there before he's even started the demo. He's already just building the need for what we do simply by asking those questions. If you're not you know, being personable, asking these questions, um, getting real with people about it, you're not making the connection. Um, 
so just want to add great. I mean, that's that's textbook, y'all. I mean, that's it's that's exactly how it's supposed to be. So great job with that, Ed. The question uh, that I have for you, uh, a couple things, um, just real quick. Number one, you know, great job looking sharp out there, man. Like Kyle said, you don't have to wear a, a suit and tie out there, but y'all understand, you represent a multi-billion dollar company. Uh, we are the number one supplemental provider in this entire country. You know, you want to you want people to take you seriously. Dress sharp. You know, you want you want to get people's uh, checking account numbers and you want them to actually listen to you. Um, you, you know, look the part. You got to look like a professional. You have to be a professional. If you want people to, to take you seriously, you got to take your career seriously. Um, there's a lot of people who do not dress the part and go out there and wonder why they get a lot of maybes. Um, but Ed, uh, so just great job with those two things. Question, man, let me ask you, have you ever regretted at the end of a week putting in, cause man, your schedule, your schedule's on point. Um, you know, with the hours, uh, I mean, man, you're averaging 50, 55 hours a week. Has, has there been a single week that you've regretted working those 50 to 60 hours at the end of the week? So, and, and I appreciate that question. And, and no, I mean, <laughs> you talking about a guy who came from working on average 80 hours a week. And that was, and like I said, it's not all about money, but that was for 55,000 a year. Okay. Yeah. Um, the hard weeks were about a hundred hours a week, you know? And so, no, absolutely not. I, um, I'm more flexible with my schedule now than I've ever been. And because I'm working around home, you know, if I need to, <clears throat> if I need to pop in the home to, you know, help out or to do something or to, to manage something or give my wife some time to do her professional stuff, you know, it's, it's, I couldn't do that working an hour away like I was. That was nuts. And um, about the the uh, the attire, you know, <clears throat> excuse me. I noticed that when I first became a detective, before they'd paid me to get money for nice clothes, because um, you get like a stipend every year for suits. Um, before that money came in, I was wearing a polo shirt with a High Point PD logo and khakis every day. And I tell you what, even the most hardened criminals there's a there's a huge dynamic shift there with how they talk to you in a in a khaki or in a polo and khakis versus when you actually wear a suit i think they there's a like you said there's an air of, there's a more legitimate air of um authenticity and so that's that's kind of what i try to emulate i've been dressing like this for years i can't help it it's just it's natural to me i, I can't i feel funny when i dress down um but yeah, absolutely. No, never, never regretted my hours throughout the week. No, sir. Well, good. Well, you know, um, the, the good news is y'all, um, you know, when you're looking sharp out there, guess what? You feel sharp. Uh, when, when you're, when you're looking confident, you feel confident. You make others feel confident uh, in, in, in talking to you. Um, I mean, like I said, y'all, uh, understand the company that, that we represent um, and play that part. Um, you know, Ed, with your schedule, man, I mean, y'all, the, the biggest takeaway from this call uh, for me is just Ed is coachable. Ed is very coachable. Uh, he's doing exactly the things that he's been trained to do. Obviously, he's he's paying attention to these calls, uh, which is a huge part of this thing, um, and and taking action. You know, I'm assuming Ed probably you know he probably takes a good bit of notes and and pays attention to these things and then studies those notes and puts these things into action. Um, you can tell just by the way. He talks in the introduction when he's building rapport, um, you know, the way he's carrying himself, y'all, which is exactly how every single one of us should be out there in the field. Um, and Ed, I mean, man, just with your schedule, y'all, there's nothing crazy about Ed's schedule. There's nothing crazy about it. But your schedule is your lifeline to your success in this business. He's putting the hours in. He's getting the activities in. He's getting the demos. He's getting the contacts. I mean, he had four weeks in a row over 100 contacts. Um, you know, and as a result, Ed hit I dare you in, in less than three months. So, you know, y'all, there's there's no excuse to not being successful here um, because we've got the map for you. You know, everything's laid out for you. All you have to do is just be coachable and follow it, just like Ed's doing. So just, you know, anyways, hat, Ed, hats off to you, man. Great job, brother. Um, and I, I appreciate your service, by the way, as well. So. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Heck yeah. Any other questions uh, for Ed, guys, before we wrap up? Going once, going twice.
There we go, guys. Um, Ed Hurley, everybody. Um, Ed has already currently earned his way up the career track. Guys, this is the map that Brad was just talking about. Earn your way up the next career track. Earn your next race. And it's not going to come easy, but it's super worth it. Um, Ed has already progressed his career less than 90 days from sales professional one to sales professional three. And now he's working, you know, like crazy. Get that next race, you know, as fast as you possibly can. Um, and he knows he's got to sell 150000 of NAP or have three trained to quick start to hit that next level. So get excited, get competitive, and get that next step of the career track, ladies and gentlemen. This is awesome. Um, we have people going up the career track than we, faster than we've ever had before. So now is the time. Uh, we are currently, this is our third year in a row that we have the fastest growing agency in all of Globe Life. So be excited about what you're doing. Globe Life just became the insurance company for the Atlanta Braves last week. Like, guys, that's a big freaking deal. Like, holy smokes. Like, that is massive. Dallas Cowboys, Texas Rangers, now the Braves? What? Be excited about the company that you're working for and take it seriously, guys. Uh, today is, you know, Whopper Wednesday. Let's go out there and have a Whopper day and uh, be a blessing for everybody that you meet. Uh, let's go smile big and uh, leave everybody in a better mood. And we'll see you guys tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, Ed. Hey, thanks.